Hello, hi, um, it's been a minute, and I'm really, really sorry about that. Um, I'm not gonna go in depth here because it's just, it's a lot of reasons why I was gone, and I am not ready to talk about it. I did, like, talk a tiny bit about it over on my Instagram, at Woods of the Books, if you want to go follow me, the link is always in the description, but I was just... I needed to give myself a second because I hadn't. I was just going, 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 and I needed a break. But now I'm back, and I was going to wait and just do a January wrap-up, and that was going to be, like, my first video, but I felt the intense urge to film today, and I don't know how many more books I'm going to read in January, um, even though there's only, like, five days left. Like, five days is a lot of time. I could read five books in five days, so, like, I didn't want to be presumptuous and then get to the end of January and be like, oh shoot, and now I gotta film something else. So what I thought I would do today is talk about my TBR, because I made a video when I first got here about the books that I brought with me, and some of them were books that I hadn't read yet, and some of them were books that I had read, but now obviously that's grown a lot. And before, this contained, like, my entire bookshelf, but obviously that changed because I went home for Christmas and I was able to bring back a lot more books. So I now have moved my red books to a shelf up there, which I will do, a, I'll probably do another video talking about those and my, like, some of my library books, although those are constantly changing. And then this is all of my to-be-read books. So I'm going to talk about them. I'm not going to go super into depth with all of them, although I'm sure some of them I will want to talk about because I'm a talker sometime. I don't know why. Whenever I film, I feel like I'm talk I am talk so much, I'm like really excited and out there, and then I can't do that in front of another human being, and I don't know why. Um, but yeah, we're just going to, we're just going to get right into it. Um, they're organized by author's last name because I'm OCD and I need things to be organized that way. Um, just like every single bookshelf I've ever had, basically. It's all by author's last name. Um, and it's funny because every once in a while I'm like, oh, I kind of want to reorganize my bookshelf. And so I take all my books on my bookshelf and I'm like, hmm, how am I going to organize them? And I'm like, hold on. <laughs> I am way too control freaky about it to change it to anything but author's last name. Like, I could do author's first name or like title, but seeing people who have it by like size or by color freaks me out. I don't understand how they know where anything is. Like I, I get it that like some people, I mean I'm a visual person, but like this is what's visually aesthetic to me where it goes from Tony Adeyemi down to J.R.R. Tolkien. Like that's how my things need to be organized, okay? Just like, okay, 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 it's fine. The first book is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. Um, I've talked about Children of Blood and Bone before, so I'm not gonna like, you know, I'm not gonna do synopses for like any of these because that's just gonna take way too much time. But I will talk about like, cause some of these are gifts, some of these have more meaning to me, so I like, I wanna talk about those things. For those of you who've read Children of Blood and Bone, you know why I immediately needed Children of Virtue and Vengeance as soon as it came out, but I still haven't read it. Uh, whoops, oh well. <laughs> it's fine. <sighs> that's like, the theme of my video. It's fine. This is a little tiny edition of Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, and I got this from one of my friends for Christmas because Jane Austen is one of her favorite authors, like, in the entire universe. So she gave this to me because she was like, it's small, you can fit it in your bag, there's no excuses, you need to read it. And it's really cute, I actually really enjoy it. Um, and it has like these nice golden edges, which are always pretty. Um, and it just, she's right, it's pocket sized. It's gonna fit in something so nicely, like when I want to, when I'm actually gonna read it. And because it's Jane Austen, it takes me longer to read Jane Austen, it'll be good because I could take it on like a trip or something. And like, I won't have to bring like three books, I can just bring this one and read it the entire time because it's gonna take me a while to read this book. Oh, that looks, <laughs> can you see that? <laughs> this happens when, because there's holes in the bottom of my shelves. So like, things will like, I'm gonna leave that. I don't... Uh, I'm gonna leave that. Next is The Wicked King by Holly Black. We know why this is here. Cruel, like, cruel Prince already happened. I, I'll link the wrap-up that I talked about the Cruel Prince in. I don't know if I've talked about this one before. Um, What's a Girl Gotta Do by Holly Bourne. 
So the way that this happened is right before my classes here started, um, Holly Bourne was doing a an event in Bath. So I was like, I've never heard of Holly Bourne before, but like I'll go because she sounds cool. She writes YA, like that might be interesting to me. And at the end of the talk that she did, you were able to buy a book for the signing. So I just like went over the table and was like, oh, that one looks good. I'm gonna pick up that one. Not realizing that it's book three in a series. So the first one is Am I a Normal Yet? And the second one is How Hard Can Love Be? And it's all about like this sort of feminist uprising in um, a school, I'm pretty sure. I don't know much about it because I haven't read it because I always I haven't read this one I haven't read am I normally I haven't read the whole series um but it is signed so that's cool <laughs> um and I felt kind of bad because like I've never read any of her books so I like all these people in line were like oh my gosh Holly I love your books like they've changed my life and I was sitting there in line like yeah I've never I've never read any of these because like these aren't published in the U.S. so I'd never even heard of it until I came here sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry. I want to read it. I genuinely want to read it because I think it'll be really cool, but like, hasn't happened yet. I did not get to properly haul this book because I lost track of all the books that I bought when I was home. So this is kind of me hauling some of those books. Um, The Diviners by Libba Bray. Um, in case you guys missed my November wrap up, I have read like half of this book, but because I got it from the library and they wanted it back, I didn't get to finish it until by the time that they wanted it back. So I didn't get to finish it. And then of course, it stopped being published in the UK for some reason, like they stopped reprinting it, so I couldn't buy it anywhere here, so I had to wait till I went home to buy it. This beautiful floppy paperback. And I kind of wanted to wait and see if I could find the nice hardcover edition. Because we all, I'll put a picture, like, for those of you who don't know what the nice hardcover edition of The Diviners looks like. My want to read it was greater than my want for that version. Plus, this version will match the rest of the series, which is, like, kind of, I like it when my versions match. Especially in a series if they're all, like, the same style. Like, I get so annoyed when I have books in a series, like, the size series. I have the first book in paperback and the second two books in hardcover. And what I would give to go back in time and get side in hardcover instead of paperback. So that they would all match and look nice together. Like, it's fine. So I'm hoping that that can happen with this series too. I know they all have this cover and that King of Crows, which is coming out next month, is going to have this cover too. I feel like I need to do this faster. The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. The only reason I have this is because of Christine Riccio because I know she loves it, and I feel like I would probably love it too. And it was used, so I was like, why not? It's hardcover, 10 bucks. The Binding by Bridget Collins. Look at the purple sprayed edges. Of Ice and Shadows by Audrey Coldhurst. I talked about this in a book haul more. It's the second book in a series. I've read the first book. I really enjoyed the first book, and I can't wait to read this book. That's that's how it's that's how it's going. Um, it's a lot bigger than the first book, so I'm intrigued to see where this book is going to go. The Invisible Orientation and Introduction to Asexuality by Julie Sandra Decker. Yeah, mm, <laughs> we're not gonna go there. The stupid 84 Trying Cross Road um, by Helene Hanf. Um, I did talk about this once again in my book haul that I did like in the middle of November. Um, but this is like my only nonfiction book ever because I don't read nonfiction. Um, and my great aunt actually recommended it to me because she knows how much I liked books. And while I was in London, I actually took a picture of this book at 84 Trying Cross Road because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in London, like I might as well, which was really cool. I posted on Instagram, so like once again, what's the books? Go follow me. And I got it from Harrods, which is like one of the really big bookstores in London. And they gave me this nice bookmark. But the thing is, is that this paperback is small. This bookmark is very large. So I like to keep the bookmarks with the books, but at the same time, it looks weird. So we just don't talk about that. Next is Dread Nation um, by Justina Ireland. Oh my god. Um, the only reason I got this is because I heard there's Ace Rap in book two, and I was like, great, gotta read book one now. <laughs> ah! The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, I'm so behind on this trend, but obviously I'm less behind now because I own it. But now I need to read it, so. Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. The Hand on the Wall, the third book in this series, came out like two weeks ago or something like that. I still haven't read this book, so like, 
failing, but it's fine. I haven't been in the mood for this kind of book. I've been reading a lot of like fantasy sci-fi right now. I haven't been reading a lot of um, contemporary and stuff, which is why a lot of these books on here are still here. Whereas the other books I'm reading really fast because it's like, I'm not really in the mood for this. But I am intrigued about this series and I really, really want to read it. So, ooh, we're on the next shelf. Okay, um, let's talk about Love by Claire Kahn. Once again, I've talked about this book a lot. So like, if you're, you must be new here if you haven't seen me talk about this book. And once again, it's like, I'm really excited to read it, but it is a contemporary and I've been in the mood right now for fantasy sci-fi. So like, this isn't what I want to read right now but I can't wait to read it when I'm in the mood for it. God's Grave by J. Kristoff. I got to page 50 or something like that around, yeah. I got to page like 50 or something like that in this book. That was when I was going home. And then I got into sort of a reading slump while I was at home and then I got better and then it like, <sighs> this is, once again, I don't, I can't talk about this. I just like, I, I'm not, I'm like, I'm not ready to talk about this, but yeah, that's why I haven't read this book yet. I really want to. I know that there's so many good things about it. Other books have become more prioritized in my mind, especially since it's been so long since I read Nevernight, so I'm sorry. China Rich Girlfriend by Kevin Kwan. Um, I read Crazy Rich Asians in back in September, so go watch that wrap up. Um, and I meant to read China Rich Girlfriend back in November because, like I said in that wrap-up, I read Crazy Rich Asians with one of my friends as, like, a book club thing and we were going to read this book next. And then I was doing NaNoWriMo and I couldn't focus on anything but that, so mm, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I might try to see if she wants to read it. I think she's already read it, but, like, I might try to read it next month so that I can actually talk about it with her and we can, like continue because I really enjoyed doing it the one book that we read together um I just got really distracted and like yeah The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee um this has asexual aromantic rep the only reason I'm reading it that's not true I really enjoyed um The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue and I wanted to read this before I knew that there was ace arrow rep in it um and Mackenzie Lee is publishing a third book in the series about Monty and Felicity's half-sibling, I think, in like July or August, so I want to read this before getting to that, even though I know that like, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way, there like, there'll probably also be spoilers in that book for this book, so like, I want to read it. Um, but once again, like, this is historical fiction, and like, like I said, I'm not really in the mood for historical fiction right now, so I have no idea when I'm actually gonna read this. Oh, here's another one. Salt Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. Why did I pick this up? Um, because there's Ace Rep in it. <laughs> Yeah, in case you can't tell, there's a bit of a theme going on on my bookshelf right now. Um, that's not that's not entirely true. I do love Claire Legrand. I read her Furyborn series back in... Oh god, I read Furyborn May of 2019? I'm, I'm gonna check this because it's bothering me that I don't know. May, I was right, okay. Yeah, I read Furyborn and then Kingsbane right afterwards in May and June of 2018. 2019, oh my god. It's weird to think that last year was 2019. It feels like last year was 2018 and this year is 2019 all over again, but that's not true because I graduated high school in 2019. We're obviously not in high school anymore. So yeah, I also picked this up because I love Claire Legrand and I want to read more of her work. I don't really know much what this is about. I know that it's kind of horror, which isn't my genre usually, but I it is something I want to get into no matter how much I usually dislike watching horror movies. Um, just because I know that it's so many people's favorite genre that it's like, I feel like I, I need to try at least. And I figure if I find something that's marketed towards YA, so it's probably not as horror as like, you know, Stephen King or something like that, that like, it'll ease me into like, soft, sorry, soft horror, is that a thing? <laughs> horror for scaredy cats is like, that's what it is. Color Outside the Lines, an anthology edited by Sangu... Mandana. In case you guys didn't watch the book haul that this was in, I have trouble pronouncing the editor's name. I'm really, really sorry about that. This is all just different um, love stories with a bunch of different authors, including ones that I have enjoyed in the past, that all, like, span, like, it's 
supposed to have a lot of different like identity reps so uh, whether that's racial sexual orientation stuff like that so like it just it just has a lot of representation which is why I'm really excited about reading it because in case you can tell I've been loving reading those sorts of books recently so Next I have A Game of Thrones by George R. Martin, and while I was home for the holidays, uh, my friend and I started watching Game of Thrones together, um, which has been a lot of fun because it's a thing, like, it's the sort of thing that we both really enjoy, so we've been having fun watching that. Um, and we're only on, like, episode 5 of the first season, which is so annoying, so please don't spoil me. Um, but I don't have HBO, so I haven't been able to watch it, and, like, I probably won't be able to watch it until I see him again in June, which is killing me, because, like, I need to know what happens! Um, but in the meantime, I have the book, which is what he gave me for Christmas, um, because he got me started on the series, so. Or the TV show. Now he's gotten me started on the books, if that makes sense. Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Sean McGuire. Um, I read, what's the first one called? Every Heart a Doorway. And I did an entire book talk on it because I was freaking out when I read, when I finished it. So that's in the universe if you want to watch that. Um, and I still haven't read this book even though it's like super short and it's fantasy. So now I'm like, hmm, maybe I should read it. But I haven't read it yet. I want to. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> Um, next is, I'm going to grab both of these at the same time, because they're together, um, is the Renegades Trilogy by, um, why did I just forget Marissa Meyer? <laughs> I know this isn't the whole series. Um, I, I was so dumb when I was packing my books to bring here. I remembered to grab these two, and then I was like, oh right, I should grab Renegades, and then I went and did something else and completely forgot. So I now have Renegades from my local library, so I can reread it, because I've read Renegades, but I haven't read Arch Enemies or Supernova, and I'm really excited to read them. Um, yeah. Also, I was kind of frustrated with myself, because I ordered Arch Enemies off of Book Depository, forgetting that Book Depository sends you the UK cover, not the US cover. So this entire series is super mismatched, which, like I mentioned before, I don't enjoy. So my first book is the... US paperback, which is taller than Arch Enemies, and then I have Arch Enemies, which is like this tiny paperback, and then I have Supernova, which is this giant hardcover. So I'm like, I don't even know what to do with this series anymore, like, eh, it's killing me. And I'm really excited to reread this whole series because I really, really enjoyed um, Renegades when I first read it, so I can't wait to see where the characters go and like, <laughs> so yeah. Plus I just love Marissa Meyer, because like, who doesn't? She's amazing. Next I have... The Night Circus by Erin Wardenstern. Um, and I read The Starless Sea at the beginning of December. I don't remember whether I talked about it. I'm sure I've talked about it before. I don't think I talked about after I finished it, but I, def I definitely talked about it. Um, and I've been wanting to read The Night Circus for a really long time, so when my cousin got this book for me in our, like, book swap that we do for Christmas, I was really, really excited, because I was like, yes, finally, The Night Circus. Um, so I can't wait to read this and probably freak out about it as much as I did with The Star of the Sea. Next we have The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. This was a Christmas present. I don't know much about it. I'm excited to read it. Yeah, I guess that's that's all I got. That's all I got, man. Next we have Heart of Iron by Ashley Potston. Um, I love Geekerella. I just read, what's the other book called? The Princess and the Fangirl, which is like her other book series. Um, and I really enjoyed those two. And Ace Rep. So, boom. All, like, quite a few of my favorite things. I have read, like, 28 pages of this book. Um, but I just, like, wasn't in the mood for it and then started another book and got really excited about that book so that I just sort of put this one down. But I can't wait to pick it back up again. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Ooh, we're on the last shelf. Let's see how quickly I can get through this. Got a lot of Brandon Sanderson coming your way right now because that's all I read, apparently. The Final Empire, Mistborn Book 1 by Brandon Sanderson. Look at this cover. It's beautiful. That's literally all I have to say about this book. Like, I don't know. What else, what else do I have to say? <sighs> okay, quick thing. So I put this bookshelf together and I didn't think about how close together the shelves needed to be 
And so like this shelf is a perfectly good distance apart because I can pull books off of it just fine. But this shelf, it's like I can barely fit a tall hardcover down here, which means that trying to get them out is impossible. I don't know why I did this to myself, but I, yeah, I've had to fix that, which is fun. Um, ugh, I guess I can talk about this one. This book is another Brandon Sanderson that is huge. This is Oathbringer. It's the third book in the Stormlight Archive series. I'm reading, I'll talk about it at the end of the video, but I'm currently reading the second book, the um, Words of Radiance. Um, and it's not mine, it's my friend's. I'm borrowing it from him. Um, he let me bring it all the way here, which I'm like, wow, respect. Um, cause like, I'd probably, I'd probably be really anxious, like, letting my book away for that amount of time. But we're both really excited about this series, so I can't wait to read it. Even though it's like, very large. With like, not, I don't know, it's not like the worst size print I've ever seen, but it's not like, great. And this book is also like 12, how many? 12, 1,230 pages, which is a lot of pages. But I am really excited to read it because it's like, Brandon Sanderson is a genius. And the first two, well, the first book was really good. I'm like a quarter of the way through the second book and that's been really good so far. So like, I'm sure this book will be amazing too. I'm just gonna leave that there because I don't want to try and move it back. Um, and then I have Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson. Um, I talk about Skyward, which is the first book in this series. I don't know if it's a duology or more, because I haven't read this book, obviously, but I talk about that in my... what wrap-up was it? Oh my god. What is it called? Book 2 with Thon. Reading Rush. The Reading Rush wrap-up. That's when I first read Skyward, and now I'm hopefully going to read Starsight, so like, yeah. Just a lot of Brandon Sanderson in general. Put this back, put this back, put this back. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Nope, never mind, you can't do it. Okay, there, and then here. Okay, I think that works. We're gonna leave that book out for now so that I can actually get books off of this shelf because it's a struggle. Um, next is Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. This cover is beautiful, and it's V.E. Schwab. That's all I have to say. <laughs> ah! Vicious by V.E. Schwab, which I did talk about in a book haul, I believe. Once again, it's, it's V.E. Schwab, and this is a beautiful cover, so like, Gotta read it. I probably didn't need to put it back. Whatever. Okay. Oof. Next is this very large boy. The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Which is... I literally know nothing about this book. I think that there's a lesbian romance, and there's a dragon, and there's an orange tree. And it's very large, which has been kind of my brand recently, because like that's all I've been reading is very large books. Which is probably not a good thing, but it's also been a good thing because I love these books. Because I love big books because there's just, there's so much to explore that it's like, and you can read it like three times and every single time you'll get something else because there's so much that you can't possibly absorb it all in one go. I've been considering doing a video like Ariel Bassett just did about like ending big book fear, but the thing is, is that I'm not afraid of big books. I love big books. I just have so many that I'm like, well, maybe I should do a challenge where I try to read that many books too because like, Obviously, I have a lot of large books and I need to read them, so... Yes, I can't wait to read this big bad boy. That was a sentence that I never want to say again. Then we have... Well, there's another book back here. Which book is this? Ooh, that's right. Okay. Probably should talk about that book first. Oh well, I'll talk about it last, it's fine. The next book I have on here is The Toll by Neil Shisterman, which I mentioned Scythe. I just reread Scythe and I'm working on hopefully almost starting Thunderhead so that I can read the toll because I know that a lot of people online have been freaking out about the toll and like talking about how much they loved it and once again a thick boy um but that's okay because I like thick boys and I can't I don't <laughs> I like thick books I actually have a mug <laughs> my friends got me this mug that says I like big books and I cannot lie on it my favorite mug. Anyway, I can't wait to get to this book because it's like very large and so much happens in Scythe and Thunderhead and it's Scythe and Thunderhead. Wow, those were words. Anyway, and like the world is insane that I'm like, how is it all gonna wrap up in the toll? Like how, I guess that's why there's so many pages in this very thick book, um, so that it can actually get like all wrapped up. 
Um, but I'm really excited to see what happens. Like, yeah. Anyway. Oh yeah, I need to talk about this. So I'm kind of mad at myself because I have, in case you haven't noticed, like I did with Supernova back there, I've had to like put some of my books behind other books because they won't fit on the shelf. And I forgot that this book was here. And it's an R author, so technically I should have talked about it here. But it's fine. It's, it's fine. Um, and that is The Conference of Birds um, by... Oh my god, why can't I speak? The Conference of Birds by Ransom Riggs. I have read all the other books in the series, so there's no, like, don't worry about that. I read the first trilogy back in, like, 2015? 2016. 2016. I read the first trilogy back in 2016. And obviously then I read um, A Map of Days and then now I have A Conference of Birds and I'm really excited to see where this book goes after the end of A Map of Days because like that was an ending. Anyway, back on track, back on what we were actually talking about, I have More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera because I've read The Rest of Us, no. They both die at the end. I get mixed up when the titles are really long and like are sort of generic. Not generic, like generalized, that's the word. Um, like the rest of us just lived here, they both die at the end. Um, I don't know what else. Down Among the Sticks and Bones, that entire series. Um, but more happy than not. It doesn't sound quite as depressing as History as All You Left Me, although we all know it's going to be depressing because it's Adam Silvera. Yeah, that's basically the only reason I have it, because Adam Silvera, and it's gay. Yeah. No. I'm so good at explaining this. It's Adam Silvera and it's gay, therefore I need to have it. That's obviously how life works, right? Um, next, Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera, which I haven't read yet. Um, oh, I did read- <laughs> I got to page 24. I don't know. Why did I put this down? Oh, because I was trying to read too many books at once and I was like, you need to stop and like actually finish some of these books instead of just starting a new one. Um, so I did, but that means I put this book down, which was kind of sad, but it's fine. Oh yeah, and I also like, okay, so this book is about twins and one of the twins kind of annoys me, to be honest. Um, I mean, I guess I need to read more from him because like I read a page 24, that's not very much, but like he was just kind of annoying and I was like, can you shut up and leave? So. Yeah, I'm sure I'll read it eventually because it still sounds really good and once again it is Adam Silvera and once again it is gay, so. Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Steve Otter. I don't know really why this is here. I should have left it at home because I'm not going to be able to read, I'm probably not going to read this book until I reread The Raven Cycle because I originally read The Raven Cycle like a year ago, two years ago. I originally read it in like winter spring of 2018 so it's been a while and if you guys have read that series you know that like a lot happens like there's just a lot of like world building and it's just it's so unique that like i just don't really remember a lot of the stuff that happened and i don't want to read this book not really remembering the raven cycle but i do really want to read this book i'm really excited about it i loved like i kind of feel like i missed out because i see all these people online freaking out about like adam and ronan and declan lynch and i like i really want to read this because of that, but at the same time I'm like, but I need to reread The Raven Cycle first because I need to remember what happened in The Raven Cycle, so. We'll see. Maybe I'll see if they have it at the library so I can read it because I would really like that. That would be real nice, but I don't know if that can actually happen. This bottom shelf, man, it's quite the struggle. I guess that's why I don't read books that live down here because it's just a struggle. We're almost done. Next up I have The Scorpio Races, also by Maddie Steve Otter. I have this book because I've read the, let's see, I've read the Raven Cycle series by Maggie Steve Otter, I've read the Shiver series by Maggie Steve Otter, I have Call Down the Hawk, and I have All the Crooked Saints, and so this was the only other book that I didn't have at the time, and I was like, well, might as well, and I meant to do a read-along with some people for this book, but I never read it, because November was not a good time for reading, I guess. Yeah, because I was doing NaNoWriMo, so I, I was supposed to do like three different read-alongs with people because I was really excited about them, but apparently writing and reading don't go well for me. <laughs> I can't do them at the same time because then when I'm done writing, all I want to do is read something that isn't like my writing. And this isn't like my writing, but it is, but it isn't. So it was just, it's just, it was weird. It was weird. So I haven't read it yet, but I really want to. 
Also, this cover is really pretty. I much prefer this cover to the US edition. Last but not least, we have The Hobbit, or There and Back Again, by J.R.R. Tolkien. This was a, I think I talked about this actually, in my like books I bring into college video, because I did, this is when, that's when this book came with me. Um, but I got this as a birthday present from a friend who has been bugging me to read this series forever. And now that I've seen the movies, he's like, well, now you have no excuse. You have to read the books. So I have The Hobbit. I have uh, The Fellowship of the Rings, the first Lord of the Rings book out from the library right now. So like, we're getting there. We're getting there. But I haven't read it yet. If you don't know what this book is about, I don't know why I just threw it. Um, you must be living under a rock. Okay, now let's try to put all the books back and make them look nice before the end of this video. It feels weird to be filming after so long, but at the same time it feels very normal. Like, I don't know why I feel weird about it, because it feels like, it feels very normal. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm filming. This happens. This is something that I do. But at the same time, I'm like, oh god, like, no one's gonna want to watch this because I haven't been around for a month and a half and like, all this stuff. Uh, go back, go back. So, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't know why I'm, like, mentally freaking out about this. But I mean, I mentally freak out about everything. So it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, let's see. Make sure everything looks nice because OCD. Just because I like, like it when things look nice. Okay. I feel like it, I feel like it looks okay. Um, that was my video. Um, thanks so much for watching. If, uh, comment down below, like, if there's any of these books that I should prioritize, because obviously, like, I haven't read any of them, so, like, tell me which ones I should read. Um, or tell me a book that you've had on your TBR for a long time that you just can't pick up for some reason. You don't really know why, but you just, like, can't pick it up, because I know I have a lot of those. I will see you next time. Bye!